From personalized TV show recommendations to advanced face recognition, machine learning is shaping our digital experience. But what fuels these powerful algorithms? The answer is data. Let me tell you more. Machine learning, or ML, is a type of artificial intelligence that uses algorithms and statistical models to find patterns within datasets and to make predictions. But here's the catch. Machine learning models are only as good as the data they learn from. Without enough data or with poor quality data, the models can generalize well and will make incorrect predictions. So let's discuss how data collection for machine learning looks like. Data collection involves gathering raw data from various sources. It could be anything from survey responses to videos, user activity logs, and more. The goal is to collect a large, diverse, and relevant dataset to the problem you are trying to solve. If you can get an existing dataset that suits your project, it's always easier to go with that. But honestly, the chances that you'll always find ready-made datasets to answer your specific needs are very low. In most cases, you'll have to go and get the data yourself anyway. The data collection is usually a three-step process, which includes a planning stage, extraction, and quality checks. At the planning stage, you must identify what data you need. Start by answering the questions. Is it personal or public data? What kind of information medium do you prefer? The data you collect can take many forms. Structured data includes databases and spreadsheets, which are highly organized and easy for algorithms to process. Unstructured data, like images, is more complex but offers rich information. Semi-structured data, such as JSON or XML files, falls in between. Usually, unstructured data is easy to collect but challenging to process. It requires large storage space, analysis, is compute intensive, and you'll have to use complex ML techniques like natural language processing. Meanwhile, structured data is quite the opposite. So, it's important to consider tech requirements before starting data collection. Depending on your project, there are thousands of ways to go about data extraction. If dealing with personal data, you can use research platforms and pay participants to complete your surveys. You can also collaborate with research labs or participate in public engagement initiatives. But if you're interested in public data, one of the most efficient ways to gather large datasets is through web scraping. Web scraping starts with identifying the websites that hold the needed data. Then, the extraction itself is done with custom-made code, web scraping libraries, APIs, or codeless web scraping tools that speed up and automate the process. When you use a scraping tool, it sends a request to a website, and with every request, some information is fetched back to you. Remember, the web scraping usually includes sending hundreds of requests very quickly. So, some websites might see it as an unusual behavior and block your IP. In this case, you can add proxy servers to your script or use ready-made scrapers with an inbuilt proxy connection. This way, when you send a new connection request, your IP will change and your data collection won't be interrupted. Now, let's move on to the next stage, data quality checks and cross-validation. Data quality refers to several factors, accuracy, completeness, consistency, and relevance. Accurate data correctly represents the events or concepts recorded. Completeness means there are no missing values. Consistency ensures the data follows the same format across your dataset, and relevance means the data applies to the problem your model is trying to solve. So, how do you ensure data quality? The first step is data cleaning. This involves identifying, correcting, or removing any inconsistencies in your data. Some common data cleaning tasks include deleting duplicate records, handling missing values, and fixing errors. 
For instance, if you have a dataset where some entries are missing, you could either fill those gaps with appropriate values or exclude those records entirely. It's also crucial to standardize data formats. Another thing to double check is where you take your information from. Generative AI models nowadays produce a growing amount of online content. So there's an increasing risk of finding inaccurate information known as AI hallucinations. If you use false details to train your model, you get an infinite hallucination loop called the model collapse, meaning your ML model won't be very accurate. But by choosing your data sources carefully, you can prevent this issue. The next steps might depend on whether your model uses supervised or unsupervised learning techniques. The difference between the two is simple. For supervised learning, the model uses labeled data to recognize existing patterns and solve known problems. Unsupervised learning explores the data and looks for patterns without specific instructions. It's used when you want to categorize items based on shared similarities without explicitly knowing what those similarities are. If you're working on a supervised learning problem, your next focus will be data labeling. In supervised learning, each data point is paired with the correct output so the model can train based on feedback. For example, in an image classification task, each image in your dataset must be labeled with what it depicts, like cat or dog. You can do this manually or use automated tools. Though, automated labeling might need manual verification to ensure accuracy. Once your data is cleaned and, if needed, labeled, the next step for supervised learning is cross-validation. This is a technique used to assess how well your model will perform on unseen data. Cross-validation involves splitting your data into multiple subsets and training your model on some subsets while validating it on the remaining ones. The process is repeated several times to ensure your model generalizes well. If your model performs consistently well across these different subsets, it's a good indicator that your data is of high quality and your model is ready for use. That's the brief overview of data collection and selection for machine learning. If you have any questions or suggestions about what we should cover next, leave them in the comments below and we might make a video about it. For more content on web data collection, watch this playlist and I'll see you on another video. Take care.